Hello, everybody. Welcome back to another episode of 5-Minute Gaming News, the show that may or may not be five minutes. Today in the news, over the weekend, we had our first look at some of the summer video game showcases. A lot of cool things are coming. I am very hype, except for one thing. On Sunday, the PC Game Show and Bethesda Xbox Showcase took place, and both had their fair share of incredible-looking games. PC Gamer showed us wild tactical titles, RTS games, what basically looked like Firewatch in space, and hell, even System Shock footage. I couldn't even begin to tell you how excited I am for that. Xbox showed us some footage from Redfall, the next Hollow Knight game, Plague Tale 2, which, by the way, if you haven't played the first one, you are missing out. A Halo crossover with Microsoft Flight Sim, which was unexpected and awesome. Flintlock, a game that looks definitely like one I'll enjoy. And of course, the creepy world of school. Gorn finally revealed to us in more detail. There was so much to see, it was genuinely fun to be kind of back in the thick of con season, even though there aren't really a lot of cons going on right now. But the big draw was the presentation on Bethesda's newest game, the one people have been waiting forever for information for, Starfield. I don't know, y'all, I'm, I'm hesitant. When I say this is an ambitious project, I mean that in a, I think they really might have done too much way. The game, as far as I can tell, is about lost alien artifacts and finding them by either joining a group of explorers or space police or pirates, and then pilot your ship around the galaxy, landing on various planets and exploring or fighting. Oh, and did I mention there are a thousand planets? The mere mention of a thousand worlds got the hashtag no man Skyrim trending, and I get it. Tell me if I'm wrong in the comments below, please, but I would be shocked if the on-planet gameplay and combat and the space exploration and space combat and thousand worlds worth of story that isn't really driving you in any real direction with multiple factions is actually fleshed out really well. You know what I mean? I just don't see how that's possible. Like, how can a thousand worlds be anything more than a bunch of places that look similar or have the same procedurally generated aliens that show up or just what kind of content is on them? At worst, it'll be a mile wide and inch deep shallow content with a lot to see, but like not a lot of it is actually worth seeing. And at best, it's like a really huge game and there's so much to do and you're just overwhelmed. And like me with Skyrim, I will never finish it. I don't know how that game ends. I may never know how that game ends. And the same thing might happen here. I don't know, you tell me. Am I crazy for thinking this? Speaking of crazy, let's talk this new Sonic game. After footage of Sonic Frontiers came out earlier this month, the trending hashtag delay Sonic Frontiers started popping up, mostly due to the concern that it didn't really look all that great. Well, Video Game Chronicle reported today that as part of an upcoming interview, Sonic team head Takashi Iizuka says, we do realize everyone is just kind of reacting to the video that they saw and because they don't understand what this new gameplay is, they're kind of comparing it to other games they already know. So we do see a lot of people saying, oh, it's kind of like this, and it's kind of like that, but it's not like this, it's not like that. And really, the team is going out and creating this new game format for Sonic, and we're calling it an open zone format. He added, if people come to Gamescom or the Tokyo Game Show, they can get that hands-on experience to play the game and understand what the game is. Because right now, we're kind of just watching videos of people reacting to what they believe the game to be. All right, so yeah, sure. Most of the response that we've seen online has been people watching a video, not actually playing the game. But over the weekend, myself and a lot of other people got to play and watch others play it at this Summer Games Fest live event that we went to. And this is all I need to say. While talking with a friend who works for a major media outlet, we were discussing the various games there, the different indie titles and whatever, and we got to the point where they said to me, what is your least favorite game here? And I was like, I don't really know. And they're like, okay, okay. Count of three, we just shout out what we think it is. And at the same time, we both say Sonic. And I'm gonna let you know, it's kind of the vibe with everyone there. I mean, it wasn't good, gang. I talked with one friend who said it made him sick to play. Like, people were talking about taking a break while playing the demo because it made them feel dizzy. That's not even to mention the empty world your platform bouncing around in. It's such a bizarre game, I simply can't do justice to describing how weird it is. But when it comes to the Sonic team, they are going ahead with the release. And according to Takashi, from our playtesting results we have been iterating, we have been listening to comments that come back, and we've also 
also be getting a lot of great feedback from people who rate the game and are like, I had a lot of fun playing this game. I'd give it like an 80 or 90 point score out of 100. Yeah, I don't know about all that, but I guess we'll all see when the game finally releases. Speaking of releases, it's Monday, so you know that means it's time for your weekly releases. Today, PlayStation Plus's relaunch begins and its new tiers are now live. Essential, Extra, and Premium, with Essential basically being what Plus was before. Extra adds an additional 400 PS4 and PS5 games, although no day one releases. And Premium features an additional 340 games that are from PS3, PS2, PS1, and PSP, all streamed over cloud, as well as try before you buy game trials. It's definitely better to have options and access. It's it's no Game Pass, but it's definitely a good start. Tomorrow, Jurassic World Evolution 2's Dominion Biosyn DLC escapes from its pen and unleashes havoc on your PC. I mean, like if you suck at running a park or whatever. Joining my BFF, Jeff Goldblum, this time around is Sam Neill, Bryce Dallas Howard, and Laura Dern. Encounter new and requested dinosaurs, as well as a new what-if scenario in the Sierra Nevada. As they say, life, uh, finds a way. On Thursday, we've got Skeleton Crew, the platformer beat em up multiplayer brawler with fast paced tactical combat where you can pick up, aim, and kick just about anything you lay your hands on at people. It's got multiple gothic heroes to recruit and upgrade, and it looks like a wild and fun, silly time with your friends. Also on Thursday, speaking of a silly time with friends, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles Shredder's Revenge releases. Up to six people can hop out of the New York sewers and beat up ninjas and robots and mutants and Krang, bash your way through the classic styled pixel art environments, choose your fighter and use radical combos to slay bogus baddies, all in time to get home for some pizza. Speaking of radical, yep, patreon.com slash Jesse Cox, where you can join amazing people like Ashley, Carter McKinney, and Lee C. Kai. Well, that is it for the show. Thank you so much. I'll see you tomorrow for another episode. What was happening there at the end? Another episode of 5 Minute Gaming News.